Despite there being several other Republican presidential candidates, Donald Trump continues to steal the show. What is up, people, the internet? It is me, Real American, back again with a new video today. It is time that we talk about the 2024 Republican presidential primary. Because everyone, once again, despite there being several other presidential candidates that talked before him, despite Mike Pence dropping out like two spots before him, etc., etc., despite all the rumors that President Trump is done, all of it, once again, was thrown out the window as yet again he stole the show from the other candidates. Yep. The event that happened in Las Vegas yesterday for Donald Trump was once again a successful one for him. Now, before we continue with today's video, I hope you enjoy these type of videos. If you do, smash the like button down below, subscribe, share with your friends, hit that little bell, follow the social media accounts in the description down below, and of course, join the channel today. Guys, just for a dollar a month, you could join Real American. This is the best way to support the daily content that we all know and love. So I hope and recommend you join the channel today. All right, everybody. And again, this is not, you know, that competitive a primary, but still, it is absolutely hilarious to see what occurred yesterday in Las Vegas. For those that don't know, there was a Republican Jewish coalition gathering in Las Vegas yesterday, and pretty much all the major people showed up. Mike Pence dropped out in it, Ron DeSantis spoke, Nikki Haley did, and of course, former President Donald Trump. And well, he stole the show. I mean, are people just shocked at this point that, oh, despite everyone being their potential to dogpile the president... Um, Trump got clearly the most support in the entire, the entire day. So let's get into it. A gathering of Republican presidential, presidential aspirants Saturday had all the ingredients for a Donald Trump pile on, which that is true. This should have been, you know, everybody just dogpiling on Trump for being pro Gaza, despite him being one of the most pro-Israel presidents ever. But you really didn't see that. You know, you're, nobody really mentioned the orange man that much. Instead, it turned into a demonstration of the former president's dominance in the race and how swiftly his perceived missteps can be forgotten. Of all the presidential can contenders who spoke at the Republican Jewish Coalition's annual conference on Saturday, Trump received the most sustained applause, with some of the crowd of over 1,000 people holding their iPhones afloat to get a picture of the former president. Does this sound like somebody that's beginning to collapse and, you know, it's Jover for him? Does that sound like somebody that's about to lose the presidential election? Or at least the primary? Does it? No. Yes, Trump is not as energetic as he was six years ago. whoop de freaking do He's six years older. Okay? He still got it. And people still love him. I'm getting real sick of some of these buffoons on Twitter that say, well, it was a boring event, you know, all this other stuff, which I can kind of agree. You know, I wish there was some more energy here and there. But when you hear what Trump says and what he does on the stage, people still love him for it. I don't get why this is such a complicated, you know, theory for some of these people to accept. I just don't. He made no references to the comments he offered just two weeks ago criticizing the Israeli prime minister, which, you know, that whole thing was taken out of context. Again, both can be true. The attacks in, Ga um, in Israel were horrific. Absolutely. However, right, there's a big however. The prime minister of Israel... He has to be a buffoon, because 
how do you have a scale uh, attack the scale of what we saw and nobody knew about it? Even many people in Israel are saying, what the hell happened here? This is some idiot. This is some moron as a prime minister if he didn't know anything about it. Or it's a failure of the intelligence agency. It's like Trump was right to criticize the prime minister of Israel. There are many questions we want to know. How, how did Hamas, Hezbollah, etc. How did they know nothing about it? Or how did they get away with it? With nobody knowing anything. He also described Hezbollah as very smart in the aftermath of the attacks on Israel that had killed 1,400. Nor did the crowd seem to fixate on them. Because guess what? Both can be true. Hezbollah, Hamas, etc. They're thugs. They are horrible people. Quote unquote, people. For slaughtering innocents like they did. However, they were smart in how they did it. I got a lot of terrible people in history who are smart. That Trump does that all the time. He calls Kim Jong-un smart. He calls President Z smart. But he still calls them thugs that, you know, are losers, essentially. It's like, Trump's not praising them. He's just saying they're very smart, but they're also pretty bad people. People judge him for what he does, said Matt Brooks, the RJC's chief executive officer. Referencing elements of Trump's record, like moving the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem, as opposed to the noise. Exactly. People don't care what Trump said two weeks ago about, well, his brother's very smart. They're a very smart group, but very terrible people. Obviously, they're horrible. They're dogs. They, uh, not good, not good. But either way, it's like, who f nobody cares about that. You know, people care about, hey... When he was the president of the United States, war didn't happen in Israel. It was peace in the Middle East, comparatively, compared to the last 30 years. It was very peaceful. He moved the embassy to Jerusalem, like he promised. That's why people, they can say, who freaking cares what he said two weeks ago? When he was president, he was one of the most pro-Israel presidents ever. Moments earlier... A more vivid illustration of the hold Trump has on the party came when his one-time VP, Mike Pence, announced he was suspending the campaign. The former VP had almost no money left and little chance of making the debate stage in less than two weeks. But his departure from the race, for many in the party, represented something larger than tactical hurdles. Proof that there was no reward for those who stood up to Trump's efforts to overturn the results of the, oh, freaking club, of course. A politico, with the spin like usual... Guys, like I've said, people are not mad at Mike Pence not doing anything. If he thinks he doesn't have the power to do it, that's one thing. But why the hell did he do, you know, he talked to, you know, uh, he did a rally, I think it was Georgia, three days beforehand. And he said, we are going to take a stand. We are going to fight like hell on January 6th. And we're going to take the fight to the states again. And not even two days later, I think it was like day before January 6th, an article from NPR came out saying Mike Pence was getting behind Ted Cruz's plan for having an emergency audit within the next 20 days and pushing it back to the states. It's like, so you're telling me he lied about it for months and suddenly he realized I don't got the power? If he would have said it back in, like, late November, like, hey, I believe crap happened here. However, I don't have the power as a vice president to kick it back to the states. If he would have said that, people could have been disappointed, but it's like, all right, <clears throat> you know, we just got to find a different strategy. Instead of preparing for the one strategy we did have, kick it back to the states, well, we had to try something different. Well, we never got to that point, because he lied. Trump, in his speech, didn't even bother mention his VP. Instead, he acknowledged several of his supporters in attendance, including Pawn Stars host Rick Harrison. Yes! The meme showed up! You know, it's like, why should he even acknowledge Mike Pence when he backstabbed him at the last second as the VP? 
And not only that, he's been saying a lot of bad stuff about Trump. Like, oh, well, he's pro-Putin and stuff. It's like, what? The former president is expected to have a dinner Saturday night with Republican mega donor Miriam Adelson, the widow of casino billionaire Sheldon Adelson. The planned dinner was first reported by The Messenger. And like I said, I think it was two days ago, the big donors are finally getting behind Trump. So not only did he win the crowd over, but it sounds like he's winning all the big donors back. This was a massive victory for President Trump. He's got an incredible reservoir of goodwill in the Jewish community, said Brooks. He's a frontrunner in a multi-candidate field, and there are people supporting the other candidates as well. But there's no question. You saw by the response today the strength of his support. Few, if any, politicians can swim through crisis like Trump, who has survived more than a handful of episodes that pundits predicted would cause his political demise. Hmm, yeah. It's like the same people saying, he's going to get thrown in jail and it's over for him. I, I, it just, at some point, you got to realize, Trump isn't your regular politician. The same thing that would kill someone politically, a regular Joe that runs for office, it doesn't affect Trump as much. But his primary campaign has, go, has uh, this go around, has been defined less by his political missteps. The legal trouble, his legal troubles uh, notwithstanding, then now he's avoided them. Then how he's avoided them, excuse me. But yeah, I mean, Trump, for all of his quote-unquote problems, he's pulling the best he's ever had, ever, and he somehow keeps finding ways to win these events that you may not think could be that big of a victory for him. It, it just at some point, people got to understand... This guy is not losing the primary. Accept it. At this point in time, it's a matter of, does he crack like 70% in Iowa? I, I know that sounds kind of insane, but it, we're at the point where it's possible. He gets 70% in Iowa, 70% in New Hampshire. Because everybody's dropping out. Trump keeps going up in the polling. Nobody's going up either, except him. So it's like, What's the point? When the big donors are finally getting behind Trump again, it's over. But anyways, folks, thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, smash the like button down below. Subscribe. Share with your friends. Hit that little bell. Follow the social media accounts in the description down below. And of course, join the channel today. Thank you so much, Godspeed to all of you.